to the Trinity Force Podcast. Yo, it's that Triforce cast beaming straight to your home. Grab a beer so we know Pony drinking alone. Send an email, a quick tweet, just pick up the phone. Leave a message, hit the beep if you're a creep, watch your tone. Discuss the meta game, patch notes, whatever helps your stats most. Obi Pong Kenobi is your last hope to snatch gold. So grab your headphones and join in the fun. We'll try and force in some jokes and some cringeworthy puns. Yo, we can make it together, people. Trinity Force Podcast. Voice is second to none, but that's the end of the intro, it's time we've begun. Hey guys, welcome to Trinity Force Podcast. You're listening to episode number 419. Joined by only, well, I'd say one regular and one reoccurring and potentially regular guest. So first, Dom is here with us. Yes, I am. And Marine Revenge is back. Hey, what's up guys? So Marine will be joining us. Uh... I can't say is it not not I can't say fortnightly because that's every two weeks and biweekly he'd be joining us twice a week <laughs> so joining us every other week, rough not even every other week every other episode roughly. I got that right. I'm looking at Don to help so. me out here. Yeah, the, from yeah. I'm not sure point. who you're talking about though. Todd. Yeah, yeah. Every other episode. I mean, biweekly technically means twice a week or every other. Isn't that what fortnightly is? Is every other week. Fortnightly always gets me uh, confused. That's one I, I have to look up. I have to look a lot of things up. Like, you think copy <laughs> editor, he would know a whole bunch of stuff. And I do, but, it, like, the moment you second-guess yourself, you have to go and look it up, because otherwise <laughs> uh, otherwise you're in for a lot of trouble. So like Mechanics lean. I, I don't know how many times I've looked that up in my life. Probably 100. Yeah, it happens. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? As long as you get the job mm-hmm. done, who cares? It's just like me and tech support. I got to Google shit. I don't know everything, but yeah, I know yeah, how to use Google. Just, but everyone thinks you know everything. And that's all that matters. And twice a week you tell everybody you know everything. That's right. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. So uh, <laughs> if you guys listened last week, Todd went over all of Top Lane. And then uh, we have a guest on for this week. Ji Woo is on with us this week. And he had messaged me on Reddit and said, hey, uh, I'm a Diamond Master level player. I play a lot of mid lane. I'd love to come on and talk about it. So uh, I'm just going to call you G. What's up? Yeah, it's fine. Hello. I'm Ji Woo. Uh, I'm a mid lane main. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. No, no other <laughs> credentials. I'm a mid lane. Uh, I mean, I, I, mean, I I'm a bot mas- lane made. <laughs> uh, I, I peaked in masters last season. Um, I was a jungle main up until like season five, and like jungle still my secondary role. And yeah, I play a lot of it, in, like solo queue and stuff. Yeah. Oh, then I have follow up questions, but let's we got business to take care of before we do that. Right. Mm-hmm. So before we jump into that real quick, if you guys are listening the very first time, thank you so much for subscribing to us and listening to the Trinity Force podcast. You can check us out at trinityforcenetwork.com. We do have an RPG show that is now going out on YouTube. It's called Dark Spell. So if you're really into Dungeons and Dragons or RPGs, you can go check this out. It's some guys playing it, and there's a lot of backstory and whatnot. But I want you all to you know jump out there to our YouTube channel and check that out. So um, we're going to jump in here and talk about mid lane. So Jiwoo has graciously decided to jump on the podcast and talk about that for us uh, as we've talked about last week the same thing this is hopefully going to be as much of an interview it is as it is a full-on discussion so we have lined up a whole bunch of questions for you but i kind of want to start at the top uh jiwoo and ask you Mm -hmm. mid lane like if i am walking into mid lane and i've been you know i've played every other role and i said i want to play mid lane let's just kind of start there what is you know what is my goal mid lane what's appealing about mid lane why should i be playing mid lane over the other role right now um, mid lane is it's just a really good. It's always been a really good role to play if you want to have like a lot of influence on the map because obviously you have the jungler who ganks everywhere, and then mid lane it's you can get to top or bot like fairly quickly depending on who you're playing, so you're able to make a lot of roams, uh, pr- like even really early on depending on who you're playing, and then most mid laners like they scale into the late game really well, so you'll you'll always be relevant uh, unless you far like fall like really far behind and i guess that's what's appealing about the role there is not a lot of overlap between like champion pools between jungle and mid so i'm like genuinely curious about what caused you to go (laughs) from jungle to mid lane that that was kind of that struck me right off the bat Um, you know five seasons or or so give or take of playing jungle and all of a sudden you're like no i'm done i'm going down (laughs) going down the middle i don't want to fuck around in the woods I uh I mean 
even when I play jungle, like, uh, when I just play League in general, I just really enjoy mechanical champions. Like, uh, you know, people always give the advice, oh, you know, just play Annie mid, just play Malphite top, you know, just, like, uh, mechanically bring the champions, just have, like, easy time winning the game. But, you know, like, I play League to have fun, so uh, in the jungle, it was, like, Lee Sin for me. Like, Lee Sin was probably, like, my first real main. Like, I just, I had the most mastery points on them right now, I think. So when 25% of the junglers out there. Yeah, <laughs> he's definitely really popular. And then um, Lee Sin saw a lot of nerfs, or I think it was just like the jungle role in general, like early season six or like late season five. It was like a lot of Cinder Hulk junglers, and then like I thought I stopped winning as much. And I was like, okay, like what other cha- like champions can I play? So then uh, I had played like mid lane in the past. Like it just has a lot of cool champions that you can make mechanical outplays on. And you just, like, feel good, you know, like, playing the champions. Like, there's just this feeling of satisfaction when you Mm -hmm. uh, win lane and you're able to, like, have a lot of impact on the map. So, like, right now I play, like, Zed, Jace, uh, a lot of, like, normal mages. Like, I think Victor's really fun, even though a lot of people just think he's, like, a farm mage. And then you just, like, contribute late game. But there's, like, a lot more intricacies involved, like... Uh, regardless of what mage you're playing. And that sort of thing is, like, really interesting to me. I kind of like that assertion along the way that you made. I mean, you, more than anything else, you're still playing League to have fun. Clearly, you're doing it either because you are you're you do, you do succeed at it or, you know, you, you've wanted to make yourself better and you, you've climbed as a result of that. But, uh, like, end of the argument, I guess, is that you're playing the game to have fun. And I feel like so many people out there get ca- caught up with rank that they forget the reason they're doing it in the first place is because they want to just have a good time playing. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say, you got to find a way to rank up that's enjoyable because if it feels like work, you know, you struggle to put the effort in that, it, you know, but when it feels like fun, you know, you keep going back to it and you don't get drained, you don't get worn out quite as easy and that keeps you going. Yeah, like when you're frustrated, you just got to take a break. Otherwise, you're just going to keep tilting, keep getting frustrated and then it's going to reach a point where you're like, why do I even play this game? Like I'm not having fun. When you when you say take a break, do you mean like after a couple losses, or if or or do you mean like stop playing the game for a minute, like uh, a few weeks or a month or whatever? Um, usually, well, personally, I don't know how it is for other people, but personally, for me, like after a bad game, I'll play like an ARM or like a bot game or something, and then like after that, I'll you know decide if I want to go and rank up again or not. But if I have like a really bad series of losses, I'll just like quit playing the game for a couple days or like maybe up to a week. And then try to come back with a fresh mind. I have a hard cut off of three losses in a row. I stopped playing rank for the day after that. Yeah, mine's like, two. Yeah, mine's three. Because I, I need to up it up one. There's always that second one. I'm like, you know what? I really didn't play that poorly, even though I, even though I'm, you know, like three. Four, I got to end the night on a win. I got to end the night <laughs> on a win, and that that's a yeah. dangerous mentality. See that? Yeah, that's that's the the mentality that it had gotten me in trouble in the past. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's just call it two. I'm not gonna be my own worst enemy here. Playing a ram. I missed the crystal scar. I love that map. Uh, you know, but. I'm done playing ranked if uh, if I lose two in a row. Uh, yeah, the real trick is not ending on a loss, but knowing what win to end on. Those really <laughs> those really yeah. close 50 minute games. Those are the ones I'm like, all right, well, I deserve that win. Now I'm taking <laughs> a break. Now I deserve to leave my chair. Yeah, I I personally find that like to go to Dom's uh, question here is that taking a break of from league like in the middle not in the mi- necessarily the middle of the season but even early season or, or whatever it may be and playing something else for a little while helps to refresh you know and give you a different point of view at the game I know. honestly sometimes i take a break in the middle of a match it works pretty well in the middle of a match <laughs> i'm just kidding I'm just <laughs> but yeah i just think out of your point I, I do agree that you know playing other games keeping yourself fresh is always good because the, the burnout is real but let, let's jump back here in the mid lane and talk about I asked this question to Todd last week because I, th- I know it's uh, very important for top lane. And let's talk about levels like 1 to 3 out of mid lane because those generally are important out of every lane. Mm-hmm. I know that you're playing different kind of champions, some assassins, some mages, whatnot. But like, what is your general goals, level 1 to 3? How are you playing those waves? Because uh, just to kind of keep building on this question, I know some people push the wave out, some people stall it. You, know, it. you can just go as ham as you want on this question or as little as you want. Okay, so... For mid lane, generally you have three classes of champions. You have like the melees who are short range. You have like most mages who are like medium range. 
And then you have really long-range mages like uh, Azir, Zeraf, maybe Varus. And then depending on like what range class of mid laner you are, your control of the wave is different. And it obviously like depends from uh, differs from champion to champion, but generally like they follow the same pattern. So um, starting with like long range mages, uh, your advantage over the other laner is your range, obviously. But most for most long range mages, this comes at the cost of mobility. Like they they generally don't have escape spells. Maybe like a move speed buff at most. So what you want to be doing is as a long range mage, you, you sort of want to like establish your dominance early. So you want to keep autoing the wave to like push it into the tower, and then once you get enough uh, ranks in your spells for them to be like mana efficient, because like if you have a rank one spell as like your rank one damaging ability and you just spam it over and over early, you're just draining your mana and you're not getting a lot of return, like on your mana. So you want to like wait a bit, and then once you like you know hit maybe level three, four, depending on who you are, you want to start pushing them under a tower. Uh, just like har constantly harassing them while pushing the wave in with your autos, and then you know making sure that you have like uh, the rivers warded so you don't get ganked or anything. And the counter to this is if you're playing against a long range mage, you want to push back as hard as you can. Um, obviously, it's nice to like be able to harass them at the same time, but in my experience, when you're versing a long-range mage, it's definitely more beneficial to focus on pushing the wave out with your spells than it is to burn your spells on the enemy laner himself. Because, obviously, you get, like, a health or mana advantage for, like, a short while, but then in the long run, you just get worn down with, like, constant harass, constant poke, and there's honestly not much you can do about it if the long-range mage is good and, like, actually wards so he doesn't get ganked. So, yeah, that's... We we have a number of questions, um, and I want to thank uh, Stormbreaker997, Benito, Dragon Guy, Deus Ex Veritas, Pete's Other Dragon, and Thallium, because they all contributed questions here that I want to intersperse. One of them uh, immediately then was like kind of if you uh, if the opposing mid laner recalls very early, like right around level three, which is what we were talking about here. What should you be doing once you push the minions out? Um. You should either be looking to get a really early ward, because this is level 3, right? You should be looking yeah. to... If you know where the enemy jungler started, you should try to ward um, the opposite side of the jungle. Like, So if you know they started blue, maybe you want to like go up and ward their red, or their raptors or something. Or if they started red, you know, you go and like ward their blue buff, or maybe like place a ward in the river, just like to give your jungler more information. Because obviously, like, um, if the enemy in mid recalls, like, they, get, they come back, they come back with more items, they're going to be stronger than you, so you want to push the wave out and recall and get back to lane as fast as possible. So, you can't do anything that will immediately benefit you other than, you know, recalling yourself. So you might as well try to help out your jungler. Yep. Is this that go for? I like that. That's, that's not, like, the immediately obvious thing to do, I think, for a lot of people. Oh, yeah, you have to, like, the, ga the game isn't, like, centered around just you, you know, you have like four teammates, you have to like think about their needs as well. I mean, a lot of people like don't like this attitude. <laughs> They're like, oh, all my teammates are retards, like I gotta, you know, play for myself, but... I'm a yeah. support mate, I, I, I'm very good at uh, doing things, like sacrificing myself for the, the good of the rest of the team, so yeah. I get where you're coming from, but... Yeah. So when you say you're helping your jungler, are you talking about kind of helping them take scuttle, helping them to uh, ward deep, helping them to take a specific camp, whatever it may be? Are there any specific uh, you know tasks or checklists you're going through as you're, you're trying to help them out if you have advantage of the lane early? Um. So one thing you can do is, so it's not just about helping your jungler, it's about putting the other jungler behind as well. So let's say you're in a matchup that, you're in a good matchup for yourself. Like, you win lane, like, you can push out your enemy lane early. Then you want to be like, okay, I want to exert my dominance and, like, you know, influence on the map, like, as early as possible. Like, what can I do? If it's, like, still early in the game, like, around the level 3 mark, so it's, like, this... It's a really solo queue cheese that I like to do. I go and ward their, um... If I know I have a winning lane, after, like, I push in the second wave, I go and, like, ward their second buff, and then I come back to lane, and if I see the enemy jungler at their second buff, and they're, like, lowish, I push in the third wave, and then I just go to their second buff and kill them, and it works most of the time. Is that happening a lot in Season uh, 7? seven. <laughs> um, 
Honestly, I haven't seen many people other than myself like do it, but it also really depends on who the enemy jungler is. If it's I just meant like, more like with the, the the smite health coming back or coming into the equation now that they didn't always have before. I just wondered if people are mm -hmm. still getting really low or if they're a lot healthier. Um, so what I know is most junglers, they use the smite for their first buff, and then they'll if the jungler is doing a full clear, they'll save their smite for their second buff or like the camp they do right before the second buff. So around that time, they're like pretty low. And then if you can catch them before they use their second smite, uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to get a kill. That's a, that, yeah, that's yeah. That, that's interesting. You know, I don't yeah, hear I like people that. talk about leaving lane too often. I think, like you said, most of us have the solo queue mentality of I need to stay in my lane, I need to farm, I need to be the best I can. And something that we've been talking a lot a lot about out of mid lane is that roaming is highly valuable and, and probably one of the best skill sets you could pick up on as a mid laner. So, yeah, let's let you know what I think roaming is probably the big one that's on everyone's head, and there's something that we'll just jump right into right now. Let, let's talk about it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Why are you doing it? How are you doing it? Uh, when are you doing it too much? When are you doing it too early? I mean, there's so many questions here about about mid lane and roaming. I think we just have we can just kind of start oh, start opening the floodgates. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> so I, I sort of touched on like really early game roaming. Um, obviously, roaming is a lot easier to do if you have a a good match at mid. So you always have priority. Like you can always make the first move. You always you're always able to like push in the enemy later in roam. Um, as for when you decide to roam, I guess, like, the really obvious thing is if you see, like, the enemy side laners, like, overextended, like, at your laner's tower, and then you think there's no wars, so you just, you know, walk up or down river, depending on where you're going, you know, just try to, like, burn summoners or, like, get a kill or something. But I think uh, ro roaming is, that's that sort of, like, simplistic approach, like, works a lot of the time, but it's... A lot better if you try to like spot these roam opportunities in advance like even like during load screen like uh, when i'm playing jungler mid i'll talk to myself okay like my top laner is i don't know maybe darius or something and then the enemy top laner is like uh i don't know someone who loses to darius sorry i'm not really familiar with top lane todd so, quickly <laughs> uh garen garen, garen, garen loses to darius okay so darius versus garen <laughs> I can think, okay, um, my my Darius is going to be, like, pushing in the Garen all game. Like, if I see that uh, Darius is, you know, like, building up a wave maybe to, like, crash it into Garen's tower so that, like, he loses a lot of CS. Like, I, I can think, okay, in, like, maybe 30 seconds, I can, like, be top lane and maybe, like, try to die for a kill. So I'll, I'll be, like, pushing my wave in advance while, like, carefully watching the map to make sure I don't get ganked while pushing. And, like, the same thing applies for, like, bot lane, too. If your bot lane is, like, Zaro or, like, Malzahar or something, like, people would just constantly push and, like, harass the enemy laners you can like look for roam you can look for roams in advance like maybe 30 seconds even up to like a minute at a time like if you know that they're going to be like winning trades yeah is it is it ever advantageous i mean it obviously it is but is it ever advantageous to leave a wave and let it crash into your tower and let the enemy hit on the tower for you to roam is that kind of a, I'm tracking the jungler, I know where the jungler's at? I guess that's probably the bigger question, is are you tracking the ju enemy jungler a lot playing mid? Um, I mean, usually, it's, it's sort of hard to track the enemy jungler, because you're focused on landing. You're focused on like, last hitting, harassing, and avoiding harass. You can't just, like, I mean, it's nice to be able to look at the minimap every two seconds, but it's just really hard for, like, the average player to, like, uh, you know, just process, like, just constantly think, like, in the back of their head, okay, the enemy jungler is going to be here, here like they can't keep track of everything like even the best players can't do it so when i do want to roam and then you know there's like a risk of the me losing waves because it's gonna like crash to my tower i'll like ping my jungler if my junglers like let's say i want to roam bot and then my jungler is top lane so obviously like if i roam bot my jungler won't be there with me i'll just say hey jungler can you cover mid while i roam bot and like that sort of thing it, like takes maybe like three seconds just type in chat like cover mid i'm roaming bot and then it saves you a lot of time and all that XP and gold don't go to waste. One of the things that often doesn't get covered in the, the Roman conversation is what happens when your opponent roams. Mm. People always kind of talk in vacuum scenarios where, oh yeah, I'm going to roam because I've met these conditions and then it's going to be successful because I roamed. Hooray. Um, but the reality is that you're playing against somebody all along. Um, yeah. And I don't want to talk necessarily about like what the conditions are for when you should roam. Um, what... You know, one of our questions here is uh, if you if your opponent if you think your opponent is roaming, what should you do 
after that and everything? Do you do you try to counter roam? Do you, you know predict where he's going? Stay in lane? You know what is your sort of best decision? Obviously, it depends on, on how healthy you are. Um, if it's so, the problem with the uh, enemy roaming is unless you already have like vision of their path they're taken, you don't know if they're like fully committed to the roam, or they're just, like, you know, trying to bait you. Like, let's say you're laning versus, like, a Zed or something, and he goes for a roam, and you don't have vision of him, so you're like, okay, you know, I gotta follow this guy, or else my teammates are all just gonna die. And then you walk into a brush, and then he just, like, kills you, because he was waiting for you. <laughs> so, if, yeah, if you're li- if if you're versus, like, an assassin, and they're, like, trying to roam, you have to be aware of, like, the risk. So, it's definitely better to be safer than sorry if you're in, like, these bad matchups, where they can just, like, you know, turn on you. So, it'd be better, in my opinion... What I personally do is I just, like, try to wait until they, like, show up on, like, a ward or something, or even, like, in the side lane, and then, like, I make my move, like, either pushing the wave into their tower or, like, following their roam, because even if you're late, as long as you show up, you can usually get something done, because you're going to be pinging your teammates, so usually they'll be ready for, like, the gank, like, for the roam, and then they're not going to be caught, like, you know, completely off surprise, so maybe they can delay it, maybe they can, you know, like... Delay, like, stall it until you get there. But if it's, like... Honestly, like, if they don't... Like, a lot of people get frustrated. Oh, my teammates don't listen to pings when, like, the enemy laner's MIA. Like, honestly, there's, like, not much you can do in that scenario. You just have to hope that, you know, your teammates listen. And then if you know that... If you know there's a risk of the enemy laner roaming uh, faster than you, you just have to place the wards in advance. You have to be, like, okay, I'm, I'm probably going to be under tower. I can't follow this guy or else I'm going to die. At least I can, like, set up vision. So... I know, like, the situation. Like, I know, like, I, I get the full picture when he's roaming. Yeah. I gotcha. So, I mean, the, the, that's probably the hardest thing about any of these kind of interviews is that we are off, we are asking you general questions, you know, about about how to play mid lane. And you can, you know, you can only answer them so gen- generally, right? Um, let's just kind of, let's talk about some um, specific mages and assassins. Let's say if um, we're, po- go ahead. Oh, actually, real quick before we move on, um, yeah, yeah. I w- let me uh, toss in my experience, like from top lane, uh, my perspective. Um, the following your your opponent when they roam, and then like getting assassinated in the bush or whatever is a totally valid thing that you have to be aware of. Um, the way that I found that works to deal with that is uh, you just and you follow them sometimes. Like maybe you clear the wave and then follow. Like you have like a delayed follow. Um, sometimes you don't have time to clear the wave, whatever. Um, but what works really well, I find, is you know if you don't have vision of the bush that you know they walk through or the river that they walk through, um, you kind of hang back uh, to to what feels like long enough to where like okay they obviously wouldn't be waiting there still that would be pointless, um, or until like you see them show up on the mini map somewhere else. Uh, then mm-hmm. you just follow them after that, and then you kind of like think of yourself as the janitor at that point, and you. <laughs> Look for opportunities to clean up. Um, you know, so maybe your team loses that initial maybe 2v3, but maybe you can come in when it's, you know, 2v1 low, now it's 2v2, and you now maybe you have the advantage and you can clean up. And that's worked for me a, a few times in the past. That's a good point, is that you have to, you kind of have to get inside the enemy's head and kind of figure out how they would be playing that in the matchup and that comes a lot of no understanding the matchup you're playing into like if you're playing garen into darius for example you have to, you have to know that darius can keep, just about kill you at any time that he wants to and so that he might just be waiting for you at that you know there so uh, i know top lane for example you want to you know scuttle crab is always good to roam and get um dropping a ward in river is always good especially if you think someone's going to roam a lot i guess does that go for mid lane as well scuttle crab helping with scuttle crab or at least dropping a ward down deep into river to understand where they might walk or even in the bush are there specific um objectives or wards places that you're you're looking for um yeah i guess it's something i do like sort of subconsciously now but then obviously like your ward placement is going to vary from game to game um early game i'm i like, no matter, like, who I'm playing or I'm, who I'm playing against, uh, I like to get an early control ward. Just place it in, like, the one brush in the middle of the river. Like, that's generally a good ward. Like, you can spot the enemy jungler if they're, like, taking scuttle crab or, like, looking to invade or they're just, like, in the river. Um, if your jungler has a bad matchup, like, let's say your jungler, like, wants to farm early, like, they're weak, and then the enemy jungler is, like, someone who can go aggressive early, who can counter jungle, 
it might be better for you to place defensive wards in your own jungle to like spot those uh, attempted invades. Mm. Or if your jungler has a good matchup, maybe you want to get Fission in the enemy jungle so that they know when it's safe to invade. They know like, oh, the enemy jungle is like low, or like they're doing this camp. Like I can, you know, like try to invade them here, or maybe even just make a gank happen on the other side of the map. If and then, you're, oh sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go on, go on. I was gonna say, I mean. A lot of the listeners out there are, are definitely in, in the, the silver range, you know, possibly lower than that. Um, silver gold tends to be the, the majority of our listeners out there and everything. It is unfair for us to assume that everybody is going to know kind of going into a game whether or not their jungler has a good matchup, at least based on the champion side of things. Um, are there kind of, I mean... I guess I mean to me it's, it sort of seems like if you're if the opponent jungler has ha- has you know taken a lot of action on the map and everything and your jungler hasn't I guess that's my attitude would be like you need to start doing some of the defensive wards to help out your jungler mm-hmm. do you, I mean are there any other sort of uh, warning signs for you that you should be be uh, you know like like little things you know obviously if the jungler just keeps dying every time he or she ganks or yeah. you know the you know then then you're talking about just a specifically bad player but little things where this matchup is not going to go in the jungler's favor for whatever reason you know little things that you can look for and then try to turn around and help um (laughs) you know speaking from the the, i guess keystone of the map Mm -hmm. um so besides like the actual champion matchup like maybe just like player versus player in terms of skill um if my jungle so if a jungler is ganking a lot obviously they're not going to be farming as much and if i have a jungler who ganks a lot and but their farm is like relatively low as a result it's like okay you know that's understandable like he's making the plays like he knows what he's doing like, at least sort of, I guess. But then if your jungler has low farm and isn't ganking, or, like, is, like, maybe camping a brush for, like, up to, like, a minute trying to gank, like, that's usually a bad sign. And it's like, okay, at that point, you have to place... Vi- you would rather place vision for yourself to make sure your plays work out than for your jungler to, like, ensure their safety or something. Because the jungle right now, obviously, they're, like, tuning it down. But it's just so oriented towards, like, farming and the occasional gank that if your jungler's not farming, it, it's just, they're, they're just going to be set so far behind that it's going to be hard for your team to win. Because, like, let's say your jungler tries to gank a lot, but, like, none of it succeeds. But you're like, okay, you burn, like, some summoner spells here or there. Like, you, the jungler has pressure, even though it's not a lot. But then the enemy jungler comes out of his jungle with, like, I don't know, maybe 50 CS up, like, maybe an item and a half ahead of the your jungler. And... He, he just runs over you in team fights. Like, it's really hard to deal with that sort of thing. So, you need to sort of understand like when your jungler is in a good spot, and then when he had when he's achieved a good balance between farming and ganking. Yeah, yeah that that excuse me that that point. Unfortunately, I agree with you one hundred percent. I think everybody should learn it. Unfortunately, it's just one of those like super advanced tactics of understanding how juggling works and understanding how the jungler cha- jungling champions work specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, same thing with matchup and and, and power spikes because I, I know it's it'd be really hard for most players to go. All right, well, I've got you know I'm playing Shivana into Warwick. Well, Shivana out farms Warwick, so even if she hits you know even if she never ganks and she comes out at level seven or eight, she's more powerful than this Warwick who comes out at six. For example, just by the sheer value of levels and items that she's receiving, and mm-hmm. that might and that might just be to your point the rule of thumb thing. If, if somebody's power farming, they're going to co- usually come out ahead if the if your jungler hasn't scored at least a couple of assists in that time. Yeah. So, uh, excuse me. Well, I want to go back to the question that I was ta- I was going to ask you previously, and let's talk about mages and assassins out of the mid lane. Uh, we'll specifically touch on. How about Zed and Syndra, or Zed and Cass, or Zed and Rise? Just kind of, you know, like huh. the meta champions right now. If I'm playing Zed, for example, what is my what is my mentality walking in the mid? How am I playing that mid lane? And, you know, you can kind of broaden this out to Assassins if you want to. How am I playing that differently than if I'm playing Syndra, Rise, Cassiopeia, etc.? Um, so with traditional mages like Rise, Cassio, Syndra, you usually want your wave to be in the middle of the lane so that if they try to push, you're in a good position to push back or if you want to roam, you can like push the wave in fast and then go roam. But if you're playing Zed, um, Zed's early game is actually not that strong. Maybe until like level four, a lot of like uh, even mages are like stronger than you, and that's like I guess that's sort of counterintuitive. Cause people think of like Zed as just like an assassin who like kills everyone. But uh, 
as Zed, what you should be trying to do in a range matchup, like for, I don't know, maybe Syndra or something, you should try to be poking with your Qs at level 1, or just like any melee assassin. Just like, try to, try to poke while avoiding pushing the wave in. So what that entails is, since you're playing melee into range, obviously the range champion is going to be able to auto you. But when a range champion autos you, that means they take creep aggro from your wave, which means your creeps are hitting the enemy champion, but the enemy creeps are hitting your your wave. So that means the wave is going to naturally start pushing into your tower. And at that point, you can think, okay, like, as long as I don't uh, hit the wave too much while I'm harassing, or, you know, you have to, like, stop harassing altogether because you want, like, wave control. Because, like, wave control is, like, the really big thing that separates even, like, low diamond mid laners from, like, high diamond master tier mid laners. Because you mess up, you, like, auto attack one too many times, maybe you use a spell on the wave, like, accidentally, and then your entire wave is, like, messed up, and then you just, like, lose outright. Because mm -hmm. you, you just take too much poke damage, just take too much harass, and you're never in a position to, like, get back into the game. So that's why the levels 1 to 3 are, like, 1 through 3 are really important, because until you're strong enough to fight the other mid laner, and for Zed, that happens at, like, maybe level 3 and 4, and then for, like, Talon, I know he's, like, another popular pick, he can just, like, all in at level 2. But Talon's... <laughs> right. Yeah, Talon's pretty overtuned right now, I think. Talon <laughs> top is busted, too, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, stats, uh, stats are backing all that up. I still don't give a fuck what you guys say. I don't care what the stats say. Talon's fucking dumpster garbage bullshit champion. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, I, I just really don't like Talon. Real wrong. I don't like that they put Talon's uh, E... Uh, where they put Talon's E, I think it should be a passive. That's just a personal opinion. It's, it's not so much why he's good. A or wall jump on a passive, that would be interesting. Yeah. That's a whole other conversation about how you tune around that and stuff. I just don't like that they, <laughs> they, they they tuned it so he has two two damaging abilities and an ultimate, right? But that that's yeah. I say that every time we talk about Talon. I think people are sick of me bolt uh, shitting on him by at this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they've been sick of you for a long time. They yeah, four hundred episodes anyway. and they're still listening. Fuck they you. keep coming back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so I guess. Oh. No, no, I just wanted to, you brought up a really good point here about harassing and, and using uh, minion management. I know that goes, shit, that goes to every, every lane. Minion management is huge, um, to, to play the lane correctly. But another question we had come in is, how do you properly balance harass, CS, freezing the wave, etc., if you're a champion with some kind of AoE poke ability? So that's just mm -hmm. Syndra, right? So, I mean, obviously it's... Oriana. Yeah, if you see the opportunity, you should be harassing the enemy laner. But then, if you have the wave in a good spot already, like if you're a melee champion, like you have your wave, you have the wave like frozen near your tower, uh, or if like ranged, like you have the wave like in the middle, and you don't want to like push it up too far because you don't want to get ganked. Um, at that point, it's honestly better to just hold off on the harass, unless you have like some sort of like single target uh, source of damage, or you like catch the enemy laner out in a position where. Uh, and you harass them, it won't hit the wave as well. Like, above all, minion, the wave control should be, like, your biggest priority when you're laning. Because wave, like, I sort of said it earlier, but wave control, like, makes or, break, makes or breaks your lane. Mm. So, I, even if you have to forego the harass, uh, yeah, just, like, try to keep control of your wave. Top lane struggles with the, uh, the same thing. Like, sometimes you get into scenarios where um, you're beating the enemy top laner really bad, and you could kill him if you could get close to him, and, and, but it's frozen at your turret, and you don't want to give up that pressure of like forcing him to come to you to farm. So you're like giving up, you know, being able to, to you know, to like shut him down, to letting him soak XP for free, and there's not really much you can do about it. Um, and in those situations, when you when they do finally come up for harass, and you know you're AOE based, um, you just have to do your best to uh, position your damage so that to where it's gonna you know, push that wave as little as possible. Sometimes you can't avoid it completely, um, but you can make those decisions to at least minimize it as much as you can. And um, sometimes that stuff adds up. Sometimes that, that can be the difference. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have your wave frozen, and then you're like, oh, you know, I really want to hit this guy, but, you know, it'll, like, uh, push the wave out or something. And then the enemy laner hits you with harass, and then he hits your creeps at the same time. That's a good opportunity to, like, harass back. Because because they hit your creeps, like his wave's gonna push into you faster. But then if you harass back, and it hits their creeps as well, like the the state of the lane is like essentially gonna be the same, because your creeps took damage, his creeps took damage, so it, like all balances out. So 
yeah, you have to like look for those sort of opportunities as well. I mean, basically, they're <laughs> they can get experience without getting gold, but they can't get gold without getting experience. So if you can deny them the gold side of it and everything, you're still coming out a little bit ahead, right? Um, depending on uh, the state of the lane, you might you can deny them experience as well. Like let's say you're Zed at level six or like a fifth. Well, then even better. Yeah, like they can't walk up without dying, hmm. basically. And I guess if your jungler is far ahead of the enemy jungler as well, and like, that that your enemy mid laner has to like fear your jungler ganking as well, like, that's like part of it. That's like part of it. It's like, oh, my jungler is ahead of the enemy jungler. Like, I can just freeze, and then you can just gank mid whenever. Yeah. So I have to ask you a question specifically about Zed before I forget it. Uh, mm -hmm. With Zed's new passive, you're stealing a percentage of the AD of the enemy champion. Are you? When you are playing Zed, are you ever trying to go for max AD, or are you just killing whatever the fuck happens? I'm I'm 100% genuinely curious about this. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming okay, so, you're just killing whatever the fuck you can kill, but I mean, obviously, like it, if you have the opportunity for a kill, like you should go for it. But if if the enemy team has like a gin or something, like I almost always just go for the gin. <laughs> but if if there's a so are are you trying to balance Zed's alt or passive ever, or are you still playing Zed like old Zed? Is probably the better question. Uh, it would definitely be better to play Zed like old Zed because obviously then you don't have to like. Uh, but when you're like selecting targets, you can take stuff like, oh, is this guy like have more influence on the map, or like have more influence in team fights than the other guy? I could like potentially ult, but uh. If it's like if you have like two priority targets, like uh, a few games ago, there was like a Graves and like a Jin on the other team, and then the Jin obviously had more AD, but the Graves was stronger. So I was like, okay, like I'll just like ult the Graves instead, even though I, I get like you know less benefit from it. It's like just less AD, and even though like it might harm me in the long run, like I have to like get these advantages now. So you you really can't afford to be greedy unless like the difference is like huge. Like one game I had like maybe ten bonus AD from my ult because I ulted the support or something and then their top lane cled had like 380 or something and i'm like oh my god like i need to kill this guy this is like 50 like plus 50 ad like like i, I want this kill so bad so i just like look to roam <laughs> top whenever i could i was just gonna say i think i've had far far fewer zeds ulting me than uh than i did in past seasons and everything so uh yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful for that because it means i get to do things after the fact sorry adam Hey, it happens. That's 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 life of being an eighty carry main, right? You die. You're support right now. That that's what eighty carry is. Eighty <laughs> carry is support. It is a second support. Uh, I think a good. I think well. I know a good question is how do you decide when you're roaming top or bot? Other than the fact that somebody's pushed up, is there specific matchups you're looking for in the top lane? Because I know if I play a lot of mid lane, I try to roam bot more than I roam top. Um, I guess for top lane, like obviously, like. If the enemy top is like a tank, you, you if you can't get ganks off early, like your later ganks will probably not work because you know they'll just like tank through all your damage unless they already got really low. Um, usually your roams, your roam priority should be on bot lane. I mean, like it's sort of like a meme, like a ADC in 2017 lol. But <laughs> like that bot lane tower is just uh, so valuable because if you get top, if you get top tower, it's like okay, like that gives you more Baron control. But Baron's not up until 20 minutes into the game. And then, so you want early dragons, you want early towers, and, like, what's the best place to, like, what's the best thing to do to, like, secure those objectives? Oh, just roam bot. I wish literally every player of this game w would uh, listen to that point, because so many people just don't want to take, tur like, push down turrets despite the gold and everything. It's like, no, if you take down that fucking bot lane turret, you have so much better dragon control, mm -hmm. and that will quickly win you games, and it just... Oh, uh, it's infuriating. I mean, you meet those weird players who are like, oh, no, don't take the tower. Like, we're winning lane. Like, we can just freeze. And then it's like, no, like, no, no. <sighs> just take it. <laughs> yeah, right. Just take the towers. Fast towers are good. That's why they put armor on towers to show you because fast towers are good. <laughs> yeah. To add on to the roaming top lane, um, I've noticed that your summoner spell choice has a, uh, a big impact. Like, if you ever roam top lane as a mid laner, it, it seems like you should be thinking about it to help that person in that matchup um, and thinking about it less as like this is going to help my team win the game and thinking more about just helping that helping that laner um, because they're just too far away they're not going to be on the map you know early enough to have that impact in those other areas they're not going to be able to help you in return most of the time 
you know, if you help them versus when you go bot lane, they get that turret. Now that bot lane circles mid, and now they're helping you push the turret down. Mm -hmm. Scratch my back, I'll scratch yours type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, top laners don't really do that for you. So you have to, it's kind of a selfless roam when you, when you go from mid to top. Oh, if you come bot lane, like, I'm definitely looking to help you out in mid lane, like, return the favor at some point. Yeah. I mean, like, if you get bot lane tower, like, your bot lane, like, obviously, they're the ranged physical damage dealer. Like, they can rotate to your other lanes and get those towers, like, mm. like pretty quickly. Man, you bring, that's, such, that's such a basic thing to say, but it's such a good, a good thing to say. Because I noticed that we do some replay reviews from time to time and bot laners will take the tower. Then everybody, I'm sure you've seen it every, on your alt accounts, everyone just goes mid. Right, and then it comes turns into yeah. a fucking arrow. But like, it's so easy to take bot tower and then switch it to your top lane or say, hey, top laner, go bot and just and just hold this, you know, hold this wave or, or try to yeah. get this wave. And then top, you know, you have a two v one top and you're taking a second tower. Like, instead of roaming mid, just swap or don't even swap, just go fucking top and try to push it down. I I don't see enough of that. I mean, if you think about it logically, like let's say you get the bot lane tower, like what is the next thing you want to do? Like, obviously, you can go like as you said, you can like go mid or swap mid or top. But then if your top laner goes bot and your bot lane goes top your top laner will probably be taking tp but your bot lane obviously has like no way of like uh, traversing the map like really quickly so it's like okay like what do we do about dragon then like if our bot lane goes top and our top lane is bot like isn't it harder for us to do dragon like that's why it's like you take the tower then you do drake and then you swap your top and bot laners and that's like the standard like logical procedure that should be like you know like, teams should be doing like even in uh, solo queue games just mm -hmm. straight up checklist take yeah. that to your to the left or right of your monitor. I mean, we've really yeah. come to the point in League of Legends that there is a checklist to playing this game. It's, you know, it's gank bot. It is take it's take dragon early. It is gank, you know, if you're jungler, gank this, gank that. Gank bot, take tower, swap, do this, take baron at this point. You know, there, there kind of is a flow chart to League of Legends right now that people should be the book. following through. Yeah, there is a yeah. book. And I think that is, I think that's a really good point, uh, Jibu, that you brought up. So to continue with some questions that we have from some listeners, uh, one of them wants to know what mid laners are good long-term investments who seem relatively immune to meta shifts. Uh, if I had to pick one champion, it would 100% be Victor. I was going to say um, Oriana. Rip. Damn it. Yeah, Oriana's the one that comes to mind for me. So let's hear it. Um, I mean, if I had to make a second choice, it would be Oriana. But uh, <laughs> um, I just really like Victor because. Uh, Oriana, like, she can have, like, some bad matchups, uh, especially early on, even though, like, you know, she's, like, a relatively uh, safe champion. But with Victor, there is no champion that will beat you at level 1. So if you know how to abuse your level 1, <laughs> you know, with, like, the... Oh, I forgot what it's called. This is embarrassing. With, with your Q auto, yep. like, no one can, like, <laughs> trade with you if you have... with your Q auto. And, like, no matter who you're leaning against, you're probably... If you Q... If you queue them and then you're like walking up to like auto them with like your empowered auto, they're like they have to back off, otherwise they lose the trade. And unless they drastically nerf his Q damage or like maybe the shield value or something, I don't think that's like ever gonna change. So because it's like such a core part of his identity. Like a lot of people really hate laning versus Victor because they're like, oh man, dude, like his level one's gonna sh like dump on me. Like no matter who I'm playing, it's just so you know it's gonna happen. Like you know he's gonna queue your level one, walk up to you when like. You can't even get like an auto win on the on the wave, and then he can just like slowly push it into your tower, and you can't do anything about it. So like Victor, it's like his wave con his method of wave control, like will always be the same, like unless like rework his kit or something. So the fact that a mid a champion has like so much control over a wave is like just so like valuable, you know. Mm -hmm. So with like Oriana, like if you're using your Q, like um, if you're if the ball is on you and you like try to queue the enemy mid laner, there's, like, the chance that it, like, goes through creeps and it messes up your wave. But with Victor, like, you can shoot your death ray over the creeps. Like, it's just... I, like, this is just, like, a personal thing, but I think Victor's, like, a super beautiful champion. Like, Broke. just in the game. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to explain it, but... Well, so, chat, Twitch chat just had a question. It's also a question that I was actually going to jump into next. Let's talk about adapting your gameplay. How, you are, how are you playing the game differently if you're ahead and if you're behind... Or even if you're even. We'll start with if you're behind. How are you playing this game differently? And I know that is a pretty open-ended question with mages and assassins being an opponent. But mid lane seems to probably be the hardest to play from when you're behind. Um, obviously, like if you're behind versus an assassin, it's really hard to come back. Because you you're out of position once and you, you just die. 
But if you're like a maze, you should be defensively warding your jungle. You should be just, you know, clearing waves until like the next objectives, like the next objectives that your team as a whole can contest. Um, if you're playing assassins, like so with mages, you would play like safer. You just like try to scale up, get your items. But with assassins, you, you could argue that it's better to play more aggressive when you're behind because like, you know, the other team won't be expecting it. And assassins, like most of them naturally like fall off late game, except for like maybe LeBlanc or something. So like you have to like no matter what like carve out those early leads, and then if you can get a kill back like when you're behind, like you get a kill that snowballs like getting an objective like that could be your ticket back into the game. So I would argue that mages ward defensively, clear waves, assassins ward aggressively, like maybe even just the river or something, and just constantly look for picks. Because when the enemy when the enemy team is is ahead, like they usually will. They'll get more lax, you know, about, like, grouping, like, playing safely, getting proper vision. They think, oh, you know, we're ahead. We'll just, like, run over the other team. And those are, like, the sort of uh, mental lapses in judgment that you have to take advantage of if you're an assassin. And if you're a mage? Uh, if you're a mage, you have to... Well, unless you have, like, really good vision control and you, like, know where everyone is, like, at all times, like, then you sort of just have to default to clearing waves and then maybe looking for picks if you have some sort of range CC. Like, if you're playing Syndra and, like, the enemy carry walks up too far, you can probably kill them, even if you're behind. So yeah. you're just kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that the enemy makes a mistake. Um, yeah. Not just, like, <laughs> positioning mistakes, but maybe even, like, rotation. I mean, solo queue is, like, there's a, everyone's always going to make a mistake. It's not, like, it's on you to identify those mistakes. So Well, I mean, and that, yeah. that's the reality of a game and everything. You can be, you can have a you'd be losing by a uh, pretty considerable margin as a team and you know they make one mistake and that'll suddenly catapult you right back into the game and and mm -hmm. uh so todd i know i've been monopolizing the discussion do you did you have anything specific that you uh, want to get out from like maybe a top lane perspective but you know to ask about mid lane to get in the head of uh, you want out of your mid laners yeah. i have a, a why aren't they doing I it to bank. sure um all right, so this is my con potentially controversial opinion. Um, I think the only reason Faker is considered the best player in the world oh, is here. not because he's the best player in the world, but because he just happens to be the best mid laner in pro play right now, and oh. mid lane is the most impactful role in the game. I don't think that's a controversial opinion at all. I think you're dead nuts on. The only reason that Faker is the best player in the world is because mid lane is the most uh, influ influential lane. If he would have I mean, had Marin got MVP for season 5 when it was like top meta of like GP Darius Renekton. Like so I mean like yeah, people it's not like Faker's just unanimously best player or anything. I think a lot of people uh, uh see him as as that though. I think they I think uh I was saying that more for the people who who have, who have that opinion, you know. There's a lot of people who blindly follow him or like, yeah, he's the best. He's the best, you he's, know. He's, he's the Tom Brady of uh, League of Legends, right? Like I don't know. I'm trying to uh, to imagine a world where Faker either was a top laner all along or decided <laughs> to just swap to being a top laner, and I still think just from a pure talent standpoint, he ends up outclassing all of the competition along the way. There, there may be times where he has teammates who are, who are or, or metas that favor the roles of his teammates along the way. Uh, you know, and 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 Marin was definitely playing on SKT when when top lane was having a huge amount of influence in the game. Um, but I still think Faker ends up being the best player, irrespective of the position he's in. Mm, I mean, I, when I think of like who the best players in the world that I've seen, I, I think of junglers. Um, I think a lot of junglers have been like the standout mvps in, in a lot of the um tournament a lot of the championships um sometimes either uh, oh todd you are the faker wouldn't be faker without bengi camp aren't you <laughs> um well i'm in yeah the... don't lie you're that guy you're that guy's like ah oh, faker wouldn't be as good if bengi wasn't fucking ganking for him in season three Look, dude, Garen looks really <laughs> strong in solo queue when the jungler ganks top at level three, and Strain Vaker looks really good when when Bangies, you know, <laughs> was by his side. So. Uh, I just, I, I just fucking pulled the sheet off that one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Todd. <laughs> it wouldn't be a good podcast if we couldn't give each other shit. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth, man. Like, I don't know. I, I, I think, I think, mid, 
I like it. Mid laners just have an advantage o- over other roles. It's like it's almost unfair. It almost makes me mad, you know, because I don't play mid lane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I mean, like mid lane champions in general, like you have high damage. Most of them like have some form of CC. You're in a position where you can impact, you know, the rest of the map like the most easily outside of like the jungler. Like, mm-hmm. like there's definitely merit to the argument that it's an inherently just You're the only lane that gets, you know, consistently gets buffs delivered to you by hand from the jungler. By <laughs> on a silver platter, <laughs> pretty much. They they tank it and get it low for you, and you walk over and last hit it. Like <laughs> you definitely are put in the 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 best position to succeed at everything. I mean, yeah, eighty carries definitely have a, a, a bodyguard, um, you know, down down in bot lane going for them. But uh, that's nothing compared to. You know, just the, the guy showing up every now and then and then also Listen, giving them free shit along the way. Y'all can bitch, but all I want to say is ADC in 2017. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mike drop. Just, pff, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we have this, like, top mid lane rivalry thing going on right now. Yeah, I like, like it. I like it's it. This is great. This is good. I mean, thing. I get salty when my jungler never ganks. They only, like, oh. sit top and it's like, you're not going to kill him anyways. Like, why are you up there? <laughs> It's like come mid or something. Did did, did either or, uh, Dom probably doesn't remember this because he only played WoW for a little bit. But did either of you play WoW like a lot in vanilla, at all? I, I didn't play in vanilla. any World of Warcraft at all. No. So I think it was my first. My, quality of your life is probably better for it. Yeah, probably. I mean, my my reference was a vanilla WoW reference, but I won't I won't say it. Never mind. Never mind. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> so. It, Let's. I have a few more questions here to, to hit before the end of the show. We are uh, re- reaching to the end of it. Um, we, I know that we talk a lot about roaming and whatnot, but are there any other fundamentals of mid lane that people don't talk a lot about? Uh, fundamentals? I mean, I think I touched on that uh, wave control is like what probably the biggest thing someone should work on if they're trying to be a good mid laner. But other than that... um. Just Reason. knowing how to, Go ahead. oh, just knowing how to play around the rest of your team. Because like I, I sort of touched on it earlier, but it was like early game. You want to like be enabling your jungler, like free up the rest of the map for like them to gank like safely. Um, late game, like you want to be you because people who play mid lane, they get this idea that you know they're like the hero of the team. Like they gotta be the star. They gotta be getting the kills, doing the DPS. But like if you're behind or maybe like someone else on your team is in a better position to, you know, carry you, like, just play supportive, you know, even if you're playing someone like Zed, like, Zed can, like, sort of take a backseat role, like, maybe uh, your top laner or your jungler, like, super ahead, like, maybe it's, like, Graves, Camille, or something, like, as Zed, in that in that sort of scenario, what you should be doing is, you should be drawing pressure to yourself, so that your real carries, like, don't get focused down, like, maybe you dive in, you do some damage, and then you just, like, try to get out without dying, or, like, maybe even if you do die, like, they burn their CC on you, like, in the team, in whatever team comp you're given, and like the state of the game at a certain point, you have to, you just want to win. The, like everyone just wants to win the game, right? Like even if you're not the one carrying, you just have to know how to win the game by playing around the people who can win it for you. Yeah. Okay. I I, I like that. It's just it's simple, easy to follow advice. So mm-hmm. I think the last the last question that I have is that if you are auto I, it does happen if you're auto filled into mid lane, or if you pick mid lane as your secondary and you only play a couple. Um, besides like Morgana, are there any specific champions you'd like to see people be playing out of mid lane, or something that you know? Just just like a fallback pick. It's like, oh, I'm not really really comfortable with the role, but yeah. Um, I, I guess the default. I guess the default champion is like Annie. Like personally, I don't think Morgana Morgana's all that good because her W damage is really low. On, like the pool damage like she doesn't actually have much wave clear until she gets one or two items but besides like annie like i mean no one wants to play annie though it's like boring it's like getting auto field support and your ad's like J- just play janna just just ward and shield you know like Dude, just you like you should not me. just play janna if you get auto yeah, right? support. Please you're gonna don't. screw <laughs> you're gonna screw more up than you get right yeah like personally i just pick thresh when i get auto field support i you're mean gonna, i'm like you're gonna screw up less on thresh than you are on yeah. janna uh yeah, so I guess hmm. it's probably I mean, Annie is just the go-to with this one, isn't it? Just, just it never, it's never banned. It's she's pretty safe as long as you're. It's with hard you. to miss though. Yeah, like even like champions like Oriana, like it's really easy to miss Shockwave. Like 
controlling the ball is like difficult. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really easy to lose track of the ball if you're not if you're not used to playing Oriana. I mean, I would say TF because back when I was first learning mid and I didn't really know how to lane, I would just like push, push, push. Like I'll take TP, I'll take TP flash, I'll just like push, uh, just TP gankling at like level two or something. But like that that strategy like it doesn't really work anymore because TF got weaker, TP got nerfed. So I would say yeah, Annie's like the best choice. I would almost say, um, depending what role you play normally when you get auto-filled, kind of determines what you should actually be picking up. Like, if I was a top laner and I played mages like Swain or Ryze, um, or somebody like that who, who already goes top lane, you know, I, I would be right at home mid lane with those same champions. Um, and if you're an AD carry and you get filled mid, there are, I mean, like, Corky's really popular mid lane right now. Um, Ezreal has, has pretty much always been successful mid lane to some degree. Um, so you almost have these like pocket picks based on what your normal role is. So mid lane you're a jungler. Got it. Mid lane nocturne. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Mid lane nocturne. Oh, mid lane nocturne isn't bad. Like no, no, it's not. You... <laughs> yeah, like you have pretty good wave clear. They can't trade with you uh, unless they're Katarina because Katarina's broken as fuck right now. Uh, just banner. Yeah, right. Just banner. <laughs> <laughs> just don't just don't think of her as a champion. Just think of her as like it's a it's a checklist. You know, you just gotta. <laughs> like if you want to have a good game, you ban Katarina, you ban LeBlanc, and until last patch, you ban Rengar. So I I I know this probably isn't the podcast to say this on, but I'm gonna say it anyway because I, I should probably wait till Santana comes back on. But I I told him this last night is that the last time that we had a pat uh, a patch episode, he had mentioned why Katarina is strong, and that's because the indicator for when she jumps to her daggers is not. Uh, it's it's you know it centers around her and not around the dagger so she actually it's misleading. You. it's misleading right and i saw that firsthand the other day i played nocturne to katarina and i knew it was going to happen but you're not ready for it no matter if you know what's going to happen so yes it is very very obnoxious to play into yeah. katarina right now because of that so mm -hmm. by the time i see katarina in any game either she is showing up and just straight up running over me or she's not useful at all so so i don't really have to worry for, about her yeah, there's no middle ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does uh, anybody else, Dom, Todd, anything else to add to the conversation? Uh, um, questions, anything? Uh, from Katarina. Yeah, Garen has an interesting <laughs> joke and taunt against Katarina. He's got a unique interaction. Yeah, because he's in love with her. Because they're know secret that. lovers. Um, okay, well, that was what I had. Great. <laughs> 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 well, uh, G Wu, I appreciate you coming on the podcast this evening and talking about mid lane and whatnot. Um, is where can people find you? Where can people find your information? I know you want to talk a little bit about the collegiate scene, and probably we'll have you back on at a future episode to talk specifically about the collegiate scene because we are interested in that. But uh, anything that you want to tell people to come find you, anything we can add in the links, you've got an open um, floor. I I have like a Twitch channel, but I never actually stream because my it, OBS won't work on my laptop for some reason. So I guess the best place to be would be my YouTube. Yeah, my YouTube, because I just, like, upload videos on there. Like, sometimes I make guides. Sometimes I just, like, upload gameplay. And that's where I, like, keep most of my stuff, so. And yeah. the URL? Uh, I haven't actually, like, set up a custom URL. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you search uh, my name, just, like, Jiwoo Kim, like, we will, uh, it's, like. We'll make it, like, bit.ly forward slash Jiwoo Kim. So that yeah, way we can make it easy to get to him. I'll, I'll make that up for him so, so he has it. Would be appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> he'll share that he'll share that link with me they'll be down in the description for anybody listening to the mp3 you can find that description actually if you you just go and click on description in your podcast app if you're on the website you can find that as well uh, if you're on the youtube it's right below the video of course uh you can find uh jiwoo's information to go find him um jiwoo i appreciate you again for coming on the podcast thank you so much for spending an hour with us talking about mid lane and uh hopefully we'll be able to bring you back on to talk about collegiate scene and and maybe zed in the future oh yeah it was definitely it was a lot of fun Thanks for having me on. Thanks awesome. for joining. Thank you, guys. That's so much. That is the end of the Trinity Force podcast for this week. That is episode number 419. Uh, we will see you back on Monday. We are going to have some mentality discussion on 420. And then on 421, we'll be talking about patch six po or excuse me, 7.4. So, guys, we will see you all next week. Peace. Goodbye.